Hey everyone, in this AP Chem series video, we're going to take a look at intermolecular forces in large biomolecules. So far in this video series, we've already taken a close-up look at hydrogen bonds, dipole-dipole forces, and London dispersion forces. And in this video, we'll do more of the same except with a focus on how these attractive forces form between large biomolecules. So when I say large biomolecules, essentially we're talking about just that, really giant molecules, typically the types we see in biological systems. For example, we've got proteins, DNA, carbohydrates, lipids, or just general hydrocarbon chains. These molecules will experience intermolecular forces too, but their sizes add some extra special considerations. The first thing you've got to realize when looking at large biomolecules like this is that they're so big, it doesn't really make sense to classify them simply as being polar or nonpolar like we've done so far with smaller molecules. Instead, when you've got a large biomolecule, you're going to look at it in terms of regions of the molecule, where one region might be polar and a region right next door might be nonpolar. Let's start off by taking a look at large molecules that have multiple regions that would be considered polar. If your molecule has multiple polar regions, it can form multiple intermolecular forces to other molecules as a result. Because there's multiple intermolecular forces that can form, attractive forces between molecules like this tend to be increased. To show you exactly what this might look like, let's consider a sample of glucose and the two glucose molecules shown here. So right off the bat, you can see that these glucose molecules are giant, and that means it doesn't really make sense to call those molecules polar or nonpolar. Instead, you might look at a region of the molecule, like right here that I'm circling in blue, and since it's only made of carbon bonded to hydrogen atoms, and the electronegativity difference between those atoms is relatively small, you might say that this region of the molecule tends to be nonpolar. At the same time, there's other areas of this molecule that contain hydrogen bond to oxygen. And between those two atoms, there's a very large electronegativity difference. So those might be regions that are more polar. And you can see there's lots of different ones, like here on the left or here on the bottom right. Since there's multiple polar regions, that means there's multiple places where those polar regions can line up with other polar regions on other molecules. In this case, since both molecules meet the qualifications for a hydrogen bond to form, you might say that not one hydrogen bond forms between these two molecules, but two. We can summarize this relationship by simply saying the more polar regions a molecule has, means there's going to be more chances for dipole-dipole forces to form, which is going to increase the attractions you'll see between molecules. We can use this to make comparisons between different substances like 1-hexanol shown on the left or 1-6-hexane diol shown on the right. 1-hexanol seems to just have one polar region with oxygen bonded to hydrogen, whereas 1-6-hexane diol has two. Based on that, you can make the statement that 1,6-hexane diol molecules will form stronger attractions to other 1,6-hexane diol molecules, whereas the 1-hexanol will form weaker ones. That's one of the key ideas for this video. Make sure you pause and take a moment to write it down. Let's also take a look at how this might work if you were looking at a very large nonpolar molecule. So a large nonpolar molecule, or at least a region of a molecule that's nonpolar, is only going to be able to experience London dispersion forces to other nonpolar molecules. As an example of a large nonpolar molecule, we can take a look at something called neopentane. Here's two of neopentane molecules and compare those to two pentane molecules. You might notice right off the bat that the two pentane molecules are longer and straighter. This allows the two molecules to line up next to each other with more contact area or what you might also call more surface area. And the more surface there is for these two molecules to come in contact with each other leads to increased chances for London dispersion forces to form, represented here with these red dashed lines. If you do the same thing and look at the neopentane molecules, you'll notice they're much more compact. That means there's less surface area or less area where the two neopentanes can come in contact with each other. That means here there's going to be fewer London dispersion forces that can form. All of this leads to the fact that my pentane molecules will experience stronger attractions while the neopentanes will experience weaker ones. 
We can summarize that by saying longer, straighter chains means more contact area between molecules, which is going to increase the London dispersion forces and increase the strength of the attractions, our final key idea for the video. And that also concludes this video on intermolecular forces in large biomolecules. Thanks a lot for watching and here's a brief summary.